last time we talked about reaction forces, we talked about 2D reaction forces. I'm coming at you today to talk to you about 3D reaction forces. Again, this is not in the book. This is not something that you got. It's something that you got to do in your own brain. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through a few of these and see if this doesn't make sense to you, okay? So let me see if I can draw some pictures for you here, okay? Um, all right. Okay, so I've got this. I've got maybe a, a, a pipe, a smooth collar over another pipe, and I'm, and I'm talking about this 3D connection here. And this guy, let's say it has a, an X, a, a Y, and then there's the Z direction, okay? So we're talking about reaction forces, okay? So I, I pull on this, I tug on it, I twist on it, I do whatever, and then what are the reactions at that connection, okay? So again, all you have to do, and on 3D, you gotta ask yourself a few more questions, but can I move it in the X? Can I move it in the Y? Can I move it in the Z? Can I spin it around the X, around the Y, around the Z? That's the questions you gotta ask yourself. And every time you say no, you gotta draw a reaction force, okay? So here we go. Can I grab this pipe and pull it down the X axis? Well, no, okay? So there's a, there's a reaction there. Now, in 3D, it's very, very difficult to determine which way these reaction forces go. So I suggest that you guess them all positive and just let the math sort it out, okay? Can I grab this pipe and move it down the Y direction? Mm, no, okay, so there's, a, uh, there's an AY. Can I grab it and move it in the Z direction? Yeah, that, it'll slide over that. That collar will slide up and down that pipe, so there's no reaction there. So let's talk about rotation. Can I spin this around the X axis? No way, man, okay? So there is a moment about the X. Can I spin it around the Y axis? No. So there is a moment around the Y reaction. Can I spin it around the Z? Ah, yes you can, okay? So there, for, for 3D reactions, um, that smooth color on that pipe is gonna have four different kinds of reactions, okay? Let's do another one, okay? How about this guy? All right, same thing, here's that pipe, okay? Okay, so this time, this time I have a square um, uh, smooth collar, okay? X, Y, Z, okay? Now I have a square. Maybe this is like the receiver hitch on the back of your truck, right? Where you plug in one square tube inside of another square tube, right? So it can slide up and down, okay? So again, I'm gonna ask myself the same questions. Can I move it in the X? Well, no. So, A, X. Can I move this thing in the Y? No. There's an A, Y. Can I move it in the Z? Yes, you can. It'll slide up and down, right? Can I spin it around the X? Nope. Moment about the X. Can I spin it around the Y? Nope. Moment around the Y. Can I spin it around the Z this time? It's square, no, you can't. And so there is a moment around the Z. So this guy has one, two, three, four, five reactions, okay? And then one more case for you here, and that would be this one. All right. Now this time, this pipe is just welded on there, right? It is completely fixed. There's no spinning, there's no nothing. So what are the reactions on this guy? Well, and uh, oh, I didn't put my axes on here, right? There's the X, the Y, and the Z. Well, this time, it's gonna have all six, isn't it? It's gonna have a X, an AY, an AZ, can I spin it around the X? No. 
So there's an MX, there's a MY, and there's an MZ, okay? So this guy has two, four, six reactions. Now six reactions in 3D is all I need to ensure that the thing will never ever move, okay? If you have more than six, that system is called over-constrained, okay? So greater than, uh, well, that's not greater, that's less than, sorry. Greater than six um, reactions is over-constrained. Okay, and in over-constrained problems, we ignore the reaction moments, okay? If it's over-constrained, we never ever need the moments. They just never come into play. It can't move, and so they're never used, and so we ignore those on over-constrained problems. And you're gonna see some over-constrained problems on problems involving this next guy, which is this, okay? Let me draw this for you. Okay. Okay, this, okay, this is called a pillow block, okay? This is called a pillow block. You've seen these before on the backs of go-karts and whatever, right? So you've got some, you got a bolt here, okay? And maybe a bolt here holding it down. Okay, there's a bolt, all right? So maybe it's bolted down, uh, and then a shaft would run through this. So you would get a shaft coming out of this, something like that, okay? and then going out the other side as well, okay? So these are very common in problems. They, they call these in the book, the book calls these smooth journal bearings, okay? And what they're designed to do, of course, is for that shaft to spin inside of them, but what they're not designed to do is to take an axial thrust. So if you were to push on that with some force along that axis, right, that shaft would just slide through that bearing. It's not designed for that kind of force, okay? So on this guy here, right, let's talk reaction forces on this guy. And let me draw you some here. Let's just say that uh, this, again, is the Y, here is the X, and then here's the Z, okay? What would the reaction forces be on this guy, right? Can I grab that shaft and move it uh, in the X direction? No. So there's an AX. Can I grab it and move it in the Y direction? Yes, it'll slide through there. It's not designed to take that kind of force. Can I move it in the Z direction straight up? Nope. Okay, so there's an AZ. Let's talk rotation. Can I spin this around the x-axis? No way, man, it's bolted down, okay? So there's a moment about the x. Can I spin it around the y-axis? Yes, that's what it's designed to do, right? Can I spin it around the z-axis? No, so there's a moment about the z. So when you see these pillow block connections or these smooth journal bearings, you need to think to yourself, hey, that has four reactions. And some of the problems in the book will have three of these on one problem. Well, if I had three of those, that's one, two, three, four times three, that's 12 reactions. So I'm going, it's over constrained. So I'm going to ignore the reaction moment. So I'm going to ignore this MZ and that MX. Okay, okay excuse me. And so we will work some problems um, similar to that where we have to do that. We have to ignore those reaction moments. So. There, in a nutshell, is 3D reaction forces illustrated to you in some very fantastic drawings, and I hope that helps you, okay? I'll see you in the next video.